What's going on everybody? We are at the back of the bus today and uh, it's not because we're doing anything back there. It's just that it's closer to the garage. It is absolutely beautiful in uh, Minnesota mid-fall right now. Uh, wow, we're gonna hit the 80s I think tomorrow. Uh, anyway, uh, it's a weird time to be thinking about what I'm thinking about, but I'm thinking about heat. And uh, let me show you what we got here. Okay, FedEx. This is fresh off the truck. I got something that all the cool kids uh, that have been doing bus conversions have got. And it is, you might recognize this. That is a diesel fuel tank. Oh, what is this? That's right, none other than the diesel air heater manual, which I'm told is in mostly broken English. So that's gonna be fun. Let's see what else we got in here. Some foam, don't need that, don't need that. Oh. And notice there's some other stuff in there. There's room for other stuff. That is because I did not get one of these. I got two. Oh, it looks pretty nice. <clears throat> I did get the one with the, uh, this is called the blue wire model. There's something I might eventually want to do. Uh, Juan from beginning of this morning. Hi, Juan. Hi, hope you're doing well. Uh, he told me about, uh, there's actually a open source controller for this that works a lot better than this. And you can even connect into home automation, uh, the internet, who knows, maybe even connect into Victron uh, Venus OS because it looks like it runs on MQQT, which for the nerds out there, is pretty cool and I'm not even sure all what it is. I just know it's a thing that can connect in with that stuff. In the unit, we got that remote. We got this remote. So this can, uh, looks like, what is it? Oh, that's pretty, okay, you got your off, your on, and plus and minus. Well, that's pretty cool, you know, if you're wanting to change that, I mean, who knows, I might not end up using this really much at all. Uh, <clears throat> this looks to be the uh, fuel pump. And I know this needs to be mounted at a angle like that, but we'll get there. Let's see what's in this box. Got more foam, wow, we got foam for days. All right, we've got, uh, looks like this is fuel line. Put that with the fuel stuff. We've got a uh, silencer for the exhaust. We've got an output vent. Got a T fitting. feeling I'm gonna need more of this but it's a good start I'm guessing it uh, expands out to get larger at the very least this is gonna be a nice thing I can bring to Menards to find something of the same size right oh lordy look at these clamps Could we have more clamps than this zip ties boy they thought of everything Looks like the uh, exhaust, or no, this is intake, I'm sure. This one is exhaust. You know, I wonder if this fits those little generators too. Huh. I don't know. Uh, oh. Is this what I think it is? <clears throat> oh. 
Okay. I bet this is for... You know, I don't know what this is for, actually. I was thinking, is this a fuel pickup for here, or is this a fuel pickup for in my tank? I don't know. You know what? I bet this uh, carefully translated manual will have all the answers. Another one of these. <clears throat> and there's this. I was curious how this was going to work. Okay, so as best as I can tell, this end probably goes in there, right? And then you got your uh, fuel pickup, or the fuel uh, actuator dingus. We've got an inline fuse. This red wire's got to be the positive, positive, and the black, um, somewhere in here, yeah, here it is, there's a negative. And then this must connect to the remote. And this is the lead that I have for that, huh? Okay. Now. Hmm. Well, that's the stuff. I'm not going to bother. Uh, there's a second, as you can see. That box a lot deeper. There's a second one in there. Um, oh, wow. This is pretty big. Actually, this is bigger than I thought they would be. Uh, so, currently, uh, in this first bay here, I have a... Let's open it up. Uh, I have a propane furnace, and it takes up a lot of room. I hate having to deal with propane, uh, so these diesel heaters just made sense. Okay. But, I'm not quite sure how I want to install them. I've got two ideas, I'm gonna share them with you, and I really want uh, ideas, pros and cons. Uh, this is where you get to really help out. So I definitely wanna hear from you on this. Uh, so this is how the current suburban propane uh, furnace is set up. All the smarts and stuff is set up over on that far side. Uh, and then I have a vent that goes up here and uh, is broke now, as you can see, because we filled it with stuff. Um, but this actually, uh, if we can here, yeah, we can get a little bit of light in there. This actually goes into the heating and air conditioning system of the bus itself. So. Normally, back behind this is a giant radiator that gets hot when uh, the engine's running and I have the valves opened. And then there's a blowers in there that blow it up through this channel. And there's one on the other side of this too. And it goes up here into these channels that run along here, along the side of the bus, front to back. Um, and that's the way I currently have this one run because obviously there's no room for this inside. And I like having only one set of ducting to work with. But when this is running in here, uh, I have to worry about venting, you know, the this is the exhaust pipe coming out. Uh, that's the intake there. And uh, uh, there's just a lot to deal with, but uh, what am I trying to say? This is kind of inefficient because this whole bay ends up getting pretty warm. Uh, you know, we lose heat from this thing, all that stuff. So I'm also thinking about installing it inside. So let's go inside there. It's feeling good in here. It's only about 62 degrees. Um, so I'm also thinking about, like I said, putting it inside and but before i do that let me show you how the vents come out in here uh still a little messy haven't really cleaned up everything from when i was living in here uh but this is where that vent comes up it goes right uh it's pretty big as you can see here's one edge here's the other edge and so half of it comes out here and the other half goes in this. This is all hollow and it it's a single uninterrupted channel runs front to back. 
So I was thinking, well, uh, I could probably uh, mount it uh, in the back side of one of these couches here. Um, and then have it blow just inside and that is only over the road heat and you know have a vent come out this way and out up front or maybe out the floor underneath here this is the front side of one of the couches and if we go down we do have a toe kick area where we could put some vents and stuff now we do have drawers that take up a lot of the space but they don't go all the way to the back or I could make one of the drawers shorter to create room back there to run that heater as well. Uh, and because I can mount it to the floor, I should be able to exhaust out and take my intake there. And the fuel tank, main fuel tank is right over here too. So that's at least mounting one here works really well. But initially I think I want to use the, uh, use the auxiliary fuel tanks that they come with. Uh, and then the, on the other side here, oh, it's, boy, it's gonna be pretty dark here, but this is where the other side vents underneath the kitchen cabinets here. I think it would be just to only run heat. If, if I ran it underneath here, would be to only have heat coming out one side and that might act more as an intake. There are places, uh, there actually are intakes in the back and actually this whole there, underneath this whole section is a tunnel that acts as an intake for the hvac system uh and anyway there's some spots in the back where there are intakes as well so here we are in the back bedroom now and you can see we do have one heat register back here i'd cut a hole here my plan was to uh, you know, put like a, a grate over there or a vent of some kind. Yeah, that hasn't happened yet. Uh, and that's where, so you can see in here a little bit, that's part of that channel. And I'll be honest, I'm, there's not a whole lot of air that makes it out of there. Uh, in the winter, the engines back here, it gets pretty warm back here as it, on its own. But while we're parked, I was thinking rather than relying on that long run, to put a second diesel heater maybe back under here or build this out a little bit as a little bit maybe a bigger step i know my wife would probably prefer it because right now she's just got that little baby step so maybe we could do that and then uh <clears throat> that just goes right into the engine bay so i can exhaust right out into there easy enough uh, and I can have the auxiliary fuel tank back there. There's tons of room to install all that stuff. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. So that is what I'm kind of torn between right now and what I'm thinking of. Uh, I've got uh, about probably a week to make this happen. So uh, I'll post this video as soon as I can. And uh, I'm definitely looking for input and advice from other people that have installed these diesel air heaters, especially in a bus. Um, you know, if, I don't know. Um, yeah, just looking for ideas, thoughts, suggestions. So, uh, you know, if you just stumbled across, across this video, please subscribe, that'd be cool. Give it a thumbs up, um, all that kind of stuff. If I'm doing anything that sounds dangerous, wrong, whatever, by all means, let me know. I'd love to not burn this place down. Uh, come to enjoy it, like it. So uh, that's everything. You have a good day. We will talk soon.